This is the Realty Classroom Podcast, episode number 55, The Marketing Mistake. Are you a real estate agent with an entrepreneurial spirit who wants to turn your job into a business without sacrificing your lifestyle, but you just can't seem to find the right plan to help you get there? Well, then, hey, you are definitely in the right place. I'm Danny Griffin, the founder of the Realty Classroom and the host of this podcast. And to help you take immediate action to build a better real estate agent business, I've created a free jumpstart course. It's a wireframe. It's good for veterans and rookies all alike. Get over to freeagentgift.com, get your copy. It's digital format, lifetime demand. I'm leaving it up there and we'll continue to make it better as time goes on. Freeagentgift.com. All right, let's get started in this episode. I want to talk about this big marketing mistake. When I coach real estate agents or people ask me for advice regarding their real estate business, It always comes to marketing. Everybody can't wait to talk about marketing. Even the sellers, how are you going to market my property? The buyers, how do I market my business to get leads? It comes up all the time, but I want to start off by getting best marketing practices in place. And I will say in full disclosure, I'm a big fan of direct response marketing guru, Dan Kennedy. He happens to have been the marketing coach or one of them to my mentor. And a lot of what he says is spot on, universal, immutable truths about marketing. And the first point is that prospects pursued run away. I want you to think about that for a second, but I want you to think about it from the context of you as the consumer, not you as the real estate agent business owner. I want you to think about it as if you are that prospect that's being pursued. So in any sales context, you could be on a car lot buying a car. You could be online and the chat is just blowing you up as you're just simply trying to look at at sports equipment, shoes, clothing, whatever it might be. There's a high likelihood that in that early moment in time where you just want some time and space to consume and understand in a very hands-off way and somebody's all over you, there's a likelihood you will get off that website, you will leave that store. So it's very sound advice to start by understanding that if your whole marketing plan starts with pursuit, In other words, if you're thinking, I need to get these leads so I can actively and aggressively pursue them. Don't get me wrong. There is a place for pursuit. You can't wait for everybody to jump in the boat, do business with you. I understand that. But if you keep pursuing them and that's your mindset, more often than not, they will run away. It doesn't mean that you won't get some people to do business with you, but your perception of that being successful, I'll guarantee you is wrong. And I can say that in the context of a very large sale that real estate is, most people that you meet in that first beat or that first moment of time don't want you to over pursue them. They are trying to consume a lot of information about this huge financial transaction and it can be a big emotional one too. They could be moving, somebody could have died, divorced, you get it, you know what I mean? So if you just attack somebody, that's the concept, I'll I'll overdo it here so I emphasize the point. If you attack somebody in a pursuing manner, it's likely that they go away. They might just go quiet on you. Well, why don't these leads ever get back to me? I mean, I was talking to them. Well, hello, how did you talk to them? So prospects pursued run away. Consider that at all times. Don't do it whenever you can possibly help yourself. The next point here is you need to balance this concept of magnetic marketing with helpful pursuit. See, there's a difference. The mindset of the pursuer, I mean, clearly any business person that sits on their duff is going to go broke pretty quickly and they're going to blame the business. So here's where helpful pursuit along with magnetic marketing really becomes helpful. And there's a lot of examples, but let's just suffice to say, we live in the digital age. Let's think about this for a second. A lot of you are asking constantly about social media. What is the right way for a real estate agent to leverage social media? Well, let's take marketing as a concept. When you get in front of a camera and you begin to give your marketing message, you hope that it's magnetically attracting people to you. A magnet's a funny thing too when I think about it, right? If you put it on the reverse side, they kind of repel each other. But if you put it on the right side, they magnetically attract and they connect. And I think that's a really cool concept because it's more of a lofty challenge to the marketer to think, Can you do something marketing your message to the right person at the right time that magnetically attracts them? And I think that's where helpful pursuit comes into play. So let me 
go away from digital for a second where that video is there and you're saying some piece of content that is the message to you think your market and it's magnetically attracting them to want more. So for example, it might be this opt-in page where you're telling them about all of the points of a true and accurate home evaluation, not just some online algorithm. And they're getting compelled to be magnetically attracted in because their timing is relatively now and they want more. Now you have a call to action and they opt in. They say, okay, I saw you digitally on social. I trusted who you were to take the next step. So yes, I gave you my address. I gave you my timing and some parameters on my house. This is where helpful pursuit now comes in. I've talked ad nauseum to my coaching group and on this podcast that this is the point where you recognize that you are not the hero. Okay. You're my hero. I'll say that thousands of times. You're my hero. I'm trying to help you as your guide, but you're the guide in this situation with this person that just opted in, in my example, for a home eval. So the pursuit is to say, hey, I'm pursuing you because you went to my landing page, you watched my video, and you opted in. I'm not saying be so egregious and you know and so staccato when you approach them. I'm talking to you here in a coaching context that says that's your thought process, okay? That they came in, trusted you, took action to exchange information because they want a home evaluation the way you so described that magnetically uh, marketed message there. So now when they come in, the next part of what you do is everything. This will determine whether you're over-pursuing in the wrong way or you're helpfully pursuing. Look, Danny, I saw that you came into my website asking for a home evaluation and I got some of the basic parameters. I'd love to get a little bit more detail if you don't mind. And, and the reason I want that detail is I'd like to give you the best evaluation for this moment in time. And of course, I need to also know why you're asking for it so I can define the expectations. If you're looking to list the property sooner than later, let's say inside the next 30 days or so, I'm going to really need to see the product or you're going to need to tell me a lot about it so I can be more helpful in making this as accurate as I can. Look, if in one uh, uh, breath, you're going to say that these online algorithms have a variance of 20%, which is way too much for the person thinking about listing. In the other breath, say... I, I need to be the most helpful I can. So the more I know about it, especially if I see it, the more accurately I can close that gap down and give you an estimated range of value because nobody has the rabbit in the hat. Well, that's helpful pursuit, right? That's helpful because you're trying to find out why. It's not like, are you thinking about moving? And, and, and now all of a sudden your voice is sounding like, well, you're asking me that not because you care. You're asking me because I know you want to come over. You want to list my house. You want to get the listing. I, I'm not ready yet. I'm 60 days out. I'm six months out. I'm 12 months out, whatever it is. So that interaction back and forth becomes part of, I got them magnetically because I was authentic and drew them in. Am I still behaving the same way once they come in? Right now, that leads to this next point here, which is, I think, critical. And it's this whole concept of the message to market match. Okay. Message, your message matching that market. See, a lot of you, and especially at my, my mastermind level, I have a lot of folks that send out a big newsletter. So for example, they talk to me about farming on a regular basis and they say, well, look, I'm sending out this newsletter, 8,000 houses, and it's not having the effect that I want it to have. Well, hold on. Let's go all the way back to the principles of magnetic marketing. It starts with, to whom are you speaking? Right? To whom? You can't just go into a farm and broadcast, look at me, here I am, I have this great strategy. I'm a strategic agent, I have a buyer plan, a seller plan, and here it is. Because here's why, that's not what they want up front. Let me repeat that because I'm stating something seriously obvious that even I have to constantly remind myself, Danny, give them what they want up front. So if you're going into a farm and somebody lives in that farm and you're trying to position yourself so that people are magnetically attracted to you, you don't go in and tell them, I, 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 me, 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 me. You say, look, most of you probably want to know from somebody like me, how's the market? So one of the best pieces of content that we could give if we were farming was an update on the market. And I'm talking the cocktail talk level, meaning price per square foot and its direction, average sale price, something sexy like the top 10 sales. Those are things that I include when I'm doing something of a more broadly broadcast message about how the market is. 
So that might meet the global market. But really, what you and I want are more now opportunities to be a viable business. So I don't know why more agents don't think, well, what if I could identify people who had context to sell in this geography first? What if I started because now I know a little bit more about them before I even send the message, then I can decide what medium I send it on. Watch. Expireds, okay? It's an easy one in our business to pick on because they already have serious real estate context, meaning they listed with one of us and it didn't work out for whatever reason. Might have been them, might have been us, might have been the market. We don't know. But you can definitely deliver a very particular message about your you know, strategic help to that very particular listing who's already having context. So we've got 8,000 people, but here's this person who has very specific context about selling and it didn't work out. I can get them a clear message that is helpful. So I'm pursuing them in a helpful way. Now, finally, like Kennedy says, first, market. Like where are they? Who are they? Especially who are they, right? Next, message. I have something that will help you. Here's what it is. Now, what they want is much more to do with property information. So sending an expired a whole list of what sold when they didn't makes the most logical sense to me if that's what they want. They want to know why did I fail? Not why you're better than the next guy. I don't even know you. And you're all running down the hill trying to tell them, me, me, me. When are you going to hire the right agent? And all this obnoxious language that is just over pursuit. You're chasing them away. Give them something that's helpful. Hey, I saw that your property came off MLS. Here, I mailed these to you. All you digital age agents can't wait to email everything out, but yet you have an address, you have a context, and you know you can get the U.S. Postal to deliver to their door. Canadian Postal, wherever you are listening to this, Australia, doesn't matter. You can deliver direct mail, the medium. So I've got who? That expired in that geography right? My message, look, I'm giving you some insightful information around properties that looked like yours that sold when you didn't. So at least you have a clue as to how the competitors did and what they had for features and benefits. And I'm delivering it to you on a medium that I'm almost sure is going to get to you and not get lost in this digital ocean. That's all there is. The right message to the right segment of the market on the right media's back, okay? Remember that. Now, the next point, if possible, you want to choose that media last, right? If possible. The best practice is, and in Kennedy's book, I love this, he does a little triangle. It's market, define it. Like the biggest mistake I ever made, I've said this in the podcast before, I said I'm in the Cape Cod, Massachusetts market. Well, man, it takes two and a half hours to get from tip to tail. I can get to Boston sooner than that. So you want to be careful of this broad based thing or too narrow where there's not enough sales. So you start with defining, I would love to get sellers who are selling in this geography. And I said sellers to all of you, even you rookies, I'm saying it, go after the listings whenever possible. Balance it with the buyers, but don't deny that listings are the business. Now you just have to say, how do I get my message to these people and how do I tweak it based on their context? For example, the expired is not the same as the probate. It's not the same as the FISBO, right? Not, and not the same as the home evaluation that came to you. So they're all a little bit different. So the mar- message might be tweaked a wee bit, but ultimately make sure you're giving them property information that adds a little of your insight and then figure what is the best way to get this to them, right? I mean, I could send something on a mule from here to California because it's the cheapest, right? If I make the decision of media based on that, but it's not the most efficient and effective way to get it to the person. So think media last after you're clear about those other two beats, right? Now, lastly, A lot of you out there are under pressure from some guru, some business wizard who says, well, do you know your numbers? Do you measure this? Look, I'm a huge proponent of math. This is all about math, but a lot of it is lagging indicator math, meaning you do something first, you look back and you see the result. That's the way most business is measured. Certainly forecasting is an awesome thing if you can get it, but look, come on, let's be realistic. We are small business people. 
And what we need to do is do our best to measure things, but not in an unreasonable way. It's more important to be sound about a magnetic message that gets to the, the market on the most cost-effective medium. And then to see, did I get anything out of this? Did anybody pick up the phone? And again, we have this challenge that I wouldn't wait for direct response marketing alone to do its deal with direct mail, for example, or direct response digital marketing for that matter. I would also try to be proactive and go out into these different media and try to get the message out there as well and certainly follow up. But do your best to measure the response. You can't just do something blindly because somebody says, well, I did this and it worked for me. And there you are nine months later, nothing's happening. You, you're not tracking anything. You don't have a URL that's trackable. Um, you don't see if anybody called off the postcards. You're not thinking about that. So be at least cognizant that did these actions bring me anything? And by the way, don't be so harsh on it. So many of you will get three deals a year and you'll say, well, that didn't work. What do you mean it didn't work? You got three three deals that you weren't going to get otherwise, that's a, a, a huge win, especially early on. So let me review these bullet points here. So the big marketing mistake is that we always stop and, and pursue too far. In other words, prospects pursued run away. Don't over pursue them. Be soft and helpful. And that leads to point number two, balance that magnetic marketing message with helpful pursuit. It's a nice balance. Next, make sure your message is matching what the market wants. Not what you want to brag about, but what it wants. Choose that media last, if you can, to deliver that message so that it's smart. You're thinking smartly about this marketing. Is this my best choice, regardless of cost? But of course, be frugal and measure so that you're not wasting opportunity cost, money, time, etc. And you can see that pretty quickly by whether or not you're creating prospects and they're becoming clients and they're becoming sales, all right? So to check up the key point here, Marketing is not about the latest shiny approach. Rather, it's much more about a strategic thinking approach to define your ideal customer, who they are, where they are, and match your message to their particular wants so that you can earn the right to teach them what they need, which is your strategic plan, and that's why you're a great guide, all right? Hey, remember, you can take immediate action and get started in a better direction or the right direction if you're just starting with our free video course over at freeagentgift.com. That's freeagentgift.com. We also broadcast our live sales training calls on Facebook and YouTube every Friday at 1 o'clock ET. So remember to turn on your page or our page and channel notifications so you won't miss out on when we go live. Also, don't forget to follow us or subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of these insights. We give them away for free. We want to help you. And if you like what you've learned here, there, or everywhere, we'd appreciate it if you would share our content, especially with other entrepreneurial real estate agents just like you so that they can get the same kind of help. All right? Hey, thanks for listening. And remember, nobody's coming for you. So go get to work on your real estate agent business. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks.